Hello and welcome to today's lecture on microstrip antenna arrays. So, we just want to take you a little backward and if you recall we did discuss about array theory. So, when we discuss about array theory we started talking about linear array and there the first thing which we started was let us take linear array with equal amplitude and equal phase. And then we looked into how we can calculate half power beam width, how we can calculate gain, how do we see radiation pattern and so on and so forth. And then we also looked at the if there is a phase variation what happens then beam can be changed so that a scanning beam antenna array can be utilized. After that we also looked at the non-uniform amplitude distribution and the advantage of using non-uniform amplitude distribution. Some examples which we had seen was cosine distribution, triangular distribution, cosine square distribution and by using this distribution the advantage was we could reduce the side lobe level, but at the expense of reduce in the gain also. Then we also looked at the planar array and now in the last several lectures we have talked about microstrip antenna. So, we actually looked at a simple rectangular microstrip antenna, then circular, then triangular, then we looked at broadband techniques and after that we looked at compact microstrip antenna techniques, then tunable antennas, dual band antennas and then we also looked at compact microstrip antenna. Now, for all those cases which we discussed earlier, typical gain can be maybe 5 dB to say 9 to 10 dB or for gap coupled configuration we could see you could get 11 or 12 dB. But there are many applications where we need an antenna of gain of maybe 20 dB, 30 dB, 40 dB, 50 dB. However, microstrip antenna arrays cannot give us about 40 dB on its own. So, generally speaking microstrip antenna arrays are very popular up to gain of about 30 dB and anything to be done beyond that it requires very special care, precision and lot of innovative thinking. So, today we are going to talk about microstrip antenna arrays. We will start first with the series feed and then we will talk about corporate feed. So, let us discuss today's topic which is microstrip antenna array. Okay. So, now for microstrip antenna array the most important thing which we really talk about is how do we feed different elements. An array is supposed to consist number of elements. Okay. So, the array size is determined by the number of elements. So, suppose if we have a linear array then all the array elements are arranged in a linear fashion or we call it a planar array where all the elements are not just in the linear fashion, they can be in the different different configuration, they can be in rectangular configuration, they can be in circular configuration also, they can be in hexagonal configuration also. Now, for all these cases then we need to design proper feed network and this feed network has to be designed properly depending upon the requirement. Suppose we need to feed all the elements with equal amplitude which has an advantage of highest possible gain, but it has a disadvantage of that side lobe level we can get is only about minus 13 to minus 13.5 dB. There will be radiation from the feed network which may actually increase the side lobe further. So, then we also use sometimes the amplitude distribution so that we can get a better performance from side lobe level point of view. So, depending upon the type of array, is it a linear array or a planar array, we need to design the feed network accordingly. So, let us look at how do we feed these antennas. So, there are different techniques to feed these antennas. So, the feed techniques are one is a series feed. That means, suppose you have a patch here, you have another patch, you connect these patches in series. So, let us say we have a one patch, then another, then another. You keep, keep connecting them in series. The another possibility is you connect these patches in parallel. So, for example, if there are two patches and in fact, it parallel is also known as corporate feed. So, how is the corporate world works? So, for example, let us say if you take an example of IIT Bombay. So, we have a one director, then there are two deputy director, 
then under these director there are multiple deans are there then under multiple dean there may be multiple head of the department and then after that there are multiple number of faculty and then after that we have nearly 10000 students so that's what the corporate feed is so you start with one and let's say that top here will be divided into two then we can actually feed two patches then these two can be further divided then that will become four four can be divided further into eight so that is a normal thing which goes like 2 to the power n so 1 2 4 8 16 but that is not always the requirement sometimes we need different type of element or different number of elements depending upon the space requirement we need to optimize number of elements to fit in a given space so a lot of thinking has to be done where we need to actually speaking feed all the different elements and which may not follow the concept of let us say 2 to the power n. Okay. So, sometimes we use series feed where we can connect them directly, sometimes we use corporate feed where it is like a corporate structure also known as a parallel and sometimes we have to use combination of these which are known as series and parallel network. So, these are the different possibilities are there series feed, corporate feed, series and corporate feed. So, let us first look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of series and corporate feed. So, one of the major advantage of series feed is it has reduced feed length because the elements are connected in series whereas, in corporate the length is much larger okay. and since the feed length is smaller there is a reduced losses are there. And also in the feed series feed, we will see that it actually gives rise to lower side lobe, but that also again depends how properly you design the feed network. The disadvantage is that there can be beam tilt with frequency, especially if you use end feed series array. And in general, it has a narrow bandwidth. The reason for that is that when we use series feed, so one element and second and third there is a phase delay happening across the patches and that gives rise to narrow bandwidth. In case of corporate feed, what are the advantages? Uh, generally speaking, corporate feed is designed for equal power to all elements, but this is not always true. Corporate feed can also be designed to give unequal power also, but this is most common thing. Now, corporate feed in general has a larger bandwidth compared to the series feed and this is modular in nature. That means, suppose you have designed a 2 by 2 array, then making a 4 by 4 array is relatively simple. Just use the concept of 2 by 2, extend it to 4 by 4. Then 4 by 4 to 8 by 8 or 4 by 8, it is relatively easy. Similarly, from 8 by 8, you can go to 16 by 16. From 16 by 16, we can go to 32 by 32. Now, 32 by 32, we are talking about 1024 elements. Okay. Now, majority of the time people actually stop there because after that if you start increasing the feed losses become very, very large. So, there in general then what is done? You take a one let us say full module of 32 by 32, another module of say 32 by 32. These can be arranged in 2 by 2 configuration which will give rise to 64 by 64 array or 32 by 32 can be put in this way. And then generally external power divider network is used to feed these arrays. Okay. So, that is the general convention. So, that the feed losses which are going to be on the same substrate can be contained. So, it is modular in nature, but what are the disadvantages? Now, basically the disadvantages since it has a higher feed length. So, there will be higher feed losses and also there will be radiation from the feed network and hence it gives rise to higher cross polar also and sometimes to higher side lobe level also. So, let us start with an example of a series feed microstrip antenna array. So, what we have here? You can see that here we have a number of patches here. So, we can just count here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then there is a central element and there are 5 elements on the left side. So, 5 here, 5 here. So, total number of elements are 11 and 
this generally uses this particular configuration uses odd number of elements so that with respect to the feed it has its left hand symmetry as well as right hand symmetry then now the comes the next part this one here is the radiating patch here so you can see that the radiating edges are connected to the next patch now generally we know that the patch length is approximately equal to lambda by 2 and suppose for feed is here we generally say this is plus this is zero this is minus so this is plus zero minus and we want the same thing over here plus zero minus so now this is plus we from here we want this to be minus and that can be achieved by using a lambda by 2 connecting line that means the length of this particular connecting line should be approximately equal to lambda by 2. So, then what happens? So, this is plus 0 minus because of this length to be lambda by 2 this plus will become minus. So, this minus then this is plus then plus here becomes minus minus becomes plus. So, that means now all the patches have pluses on this side all the patches have minuses on this side. So, they will be radiating in the broad side direction and hence they will give rise to better gain. So, over here now the next part is what should be the characteristic impedance of this line. So, we know the length should be approximately lambda by 2. Now, why again I use the term approximate, okay? why not exact lambda by 2? The reason for that is that the fringing fields are also there. So, if you look at the equivalent configuration of this one here, so, what the fringing field will make it? The effective length will be something like this. It will go up here, then it will come here. The fringing field will be like this, going up here and like this here. So, that is why the effective length should be lambda by 2, effective length of this should be lambda by 2, not the physical length of this and this should be lambda by 2. So, effective length is important and that is what gives rise to phase shift from here to here which is 180 degree. Now, as I mentioned the next thing, so what is important is what should be the characteristic impedance of this particular line here. That means, what should be the width of this line. Now, if you apply transmission line theory, so in a transmission line theory we know that concept is that a transmission line which is ended with the load Z L and this length is if it is lambda by 2 then input impedance of that line is equal to Z L. It is not dependent on the characteristic impedance of the line. So, we try to use the same concept, okay, it does not depend upon the characteristic impedance of the line. So, that means you can choose any width, but that is not really correct over here. So, is transmission line theory wrong? No, definitely not. Transmission line theory is correct that if the length is lambda by 2 and the load is Z L, input impedance will be equal to Z L. But over here, the loading effect is making changes. So, let us just look at this configuration one more time. So, what is happening? Think about this. If this width is very large, suppose it covers over here the whole thing. So, is this patch then of length L? Not really. In fact, it look like that whole thing is a one big patch over here. So, now suppose if this characteristic impedance is relatively uh, high, high would mean this width is small. So, what will happen? There will be more fringing field from here, but if this width is little large, then there will be lesser fringing field over here. So, what really happens because of that this actually line adds does loading to this particular patch. Not only that, in fact, the design of series feed microstrip antenna is much more complicated in a sense that suppose we take a this one here, then we add let us say these two patches and in that case suppose if we just think of three element, then this is not there. If this is not there, that means this side is not loaded. Okay? So, this will act as an open circuit. So, that loading over here will be different, but now suppose we just add one more patch here, this is suppose not there. So, now this C is an open circuit, but this C is over here a loaded line. So, that means the impedance of this then loaded over here then comes over here and the same thing happens over here. So, you as you keep on adding more number of elements. So, what actually happens? The loading effect of that reflects over here and that is why 
one has to really properly optimize the patch length as well as the connecting length as the number of elements change. And now I am going to show the design example at car band. A car band actually corresponds to the millimeter wave band and in fact the band here which we have chosen is about 34 to 36 gigahertz. Uh, just to tell you a millimeter wave band is very large, it, it actually it goes from 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz and millimeter wave band today has become very, very important especially with the advent of IOT which is internet of thing, they are talking about using millimeter wave communication. Then there is another thing which is coming up that is 5G. So, 5G is also going to use a millimeter wave communication. So, there are lot of advantages and disadvantages of using millimeter wave configuration. So, one of the major, major advantages that the size of the antenna at millimeter wave is very, very small. I mean just think about it compared to 3 gigahertz, if you have to design antenna at 30 gigahertz, frequency is increased by 10 times, that means the patch length will reduce by 10 times. So, that means in a very small aperture you can accommodate an antenna or in the same aperture you can actually accommodate compared to 3 gigahertz, you can accommodate 10 times more of the antenna that means gain realized can be very, very high. So, that is the major advantage of millimeter wave. The second major advantage is the bandwidth available. So, for example, in the millimeter wave, what we have bandwidth available is say let us say from 34 to 36 gigahertz, but even you can extend that. Now, but just 34 to 36 giga itself is a 2 gigahertz bandwidth and we can accommodate lots of channel, we can actually talk about a very large bandwidth, very large data rate. People have been talking about having a data rate of 1 gigabits per second. So, think about a movie which may be having a 1 gigabit, you can download that movie in just about 1 second which may take few minutes today. So, data transfer will be very, very fast. But at millimeter wave, we have to be very careful about some other problems associated with it. And the one of the major problem is the path loss is very high and especially rain attenuation is very, very high. So, during monsoon, propagation in the free space may be very less because rain attenuation will be really low, large. So, there will be lot of absorption will happen in the water molecule of the rain lot of diffraction will happen and also in millimeter wave there are lot of bands are there where it has a very high absorption also. So, for example, just to mention, so 34 to 36 gigahertz there is the lowest absorption in that particular range. Then at 60 gigahertz there is a very high absorption, then at 94 gigahertz there is a lower absorption, then at 140 gigahertz there is a lower absorption. Then at 220 gigahertz, there is a lower absorption. So, you really speaking, if you want to use communication, then you have to select these bands where there are lower absorption. Yet, at around 60 gigahertz, it is very, very popular, where the absorption is very high. So, now you might wonder why 60 gigahertz or 67 gigahertz is very, very popular. The reason for that is the precisely the same thing that it has a very high absorption. So, if it has a high absorption, just think about that let us say we are in a room and in that room there are multiple gadgets are connected and all these gadgets are connected with the wireless router. So, that would mean that let us say a computer can communicate with another computer without connecting the cable, computer can communicate with the printer and the data rate will be very, very fast or so many devices within that room can communicate with each other wirelessly. So, now that information is freely available here. So, we do not want that information to be heard or to be tapped by the people outside. So, just because of the very high absorption, so what happens the distance travel will be less. So, outside the room or the office or the lab, the signal will attenuate very significantly. In fact, about 4 years back, 
I had gone to Kashmir in India and uh, there it was very interesting thing happened. I uh, will just tell you little diversion from here, but then you will realize the importance of millimeter wave and also why I am telling you that, that why 60 gigahertz is very, very important. So, just a little diversion here. So, around 4 years back, me and my family went to Srinagar because one of my army student who was posted there, they had some requirements about antennas and uh, mobile phone jammers. So, we went there and uh, uh, at IIT we get LTC, so I took LTC, took the whole family over there. And just before going, I remember we went on 1st June and just previous night around 11, 11.30 pm, my this student who was of course a lieutenant colonel there, he called me and he said, sir, there is a one small problem. I said, what is that? He said, curfew has been imposed in Kashmir. And then he said, still, sir, please come. We will make arrangement. Now, I did not want to tell my family something like that is there. I said, since my student is telling and he is from army, they will take care of it. So, well, we all went over there when we were about to land in Kashmir. So, we could see the roads which were all vacant and they were all saying, oh, you know, all these vacant road, empty roads are there. I did not want to tell them that it is because there is a curfew in Kashmir. So, when we came out, you know, the air was so fresh, you know, it actually really felt, you know, that you have really come to heaven, absolute fantastic clean air. So, you know, you, we just took lot of breathing and, uh, you know, felt good about it. So, when we came out and then, you know, you could see there were very few people and then my family came to know that there is a curfew. But this person who had come in the civilian dress, he said, do not worry, we will take care of it. Well, that worry was there, but let me tell you so what happened. So, from there and we had to go to Baramula place where uh, uh, this particular uh, officer was posted. So, from Kashmir, we were going towards this on one road which we took. We saw that the road was totally blocked. The driver said, do not worry. Then we took another road. On that particular road, we saw now that there was a lot of smoke was there and people were burning tires and all the other things. He said, do not worry, sir, we will take care of it. And then he took another now bumpy road. So, we went over there and then uh, suddenly he saw that there were another riots were happening there. And then we actually took a shelter in one of the Kashmiri's house. They were very nice, very cordial people. So, we spent some time with them and then suddenly the driver came, he says, okay, let us go over there. And then we moved, we reached safe and sound there. And then because it was curfew, so these uh, army people, we had done the work. So, during the day, we did the work. And then they said, sir, Abhi, the work is now over. Let us just look into some other things. So, then we went, we saw the bunkers, we saw all those uh, different very interesting things, which as a civilian, we would never see. And then they took us to the place which is Aman Setu. This is right at the border. And at that place uh, between the India border and Pakistan, there is just a very small bridge. And all along the way, so these people kept on explaining us. So, there was only a one river which was flowing. So, on this river, India was on this side and Pakistan was on the other side. And then when we went over there at Aman Setu, so one of the person actually uh, gave one uh, binocular to my daughter. He says, okay, you see. And through that binocular, I also looked into that. So, we could actually see the people who were in the Pakistan side. So, when we were looking at the binocular, we noticed that they were also looking at the binocular. So, we were actually looking at each other through binocular. So, they waved hand and we waved our hands. Okay, And then some people came out from there. Then over here, we were just saying, so it was really, even though we were across two different countries, that the border was very small, but you know, it actually looked like that, you know, you are just waving to your friends over there. So I think people are nice, so it is not that we had a problem, but there only I was thinking about, because these people were talking using their walkie-talkie and other thing. Now walkie-talkie, if you are talking, then the range will be much larger, so whatever 
things you are communicating within let us say in Indian army that can be heard by the Pakistan army. So, that is where I started thinking about why not we use millimeter wave communication. So, suppose if we had used this 60 gigahertz band, then they could communicate in their area and across the river or across that bridge signal will not be going to that particular site, there will be a huge attenuation. So, millimeter wave do have some good application, size is small, data rate will be very, very fast. So, let us just see now what we actually realized. So, after that diversion, so we designed the antenna at car band and over here uh, one can actually see that the substrate thickness is very, very small, it is just 0 0.254 millimeter ok. In fact, it is a very thin substrate if you do not handle it carefully, it actually can bend also and a lot of warps can be seen over here. So, it has to be handled very carefully. So, why such a small thickness? If you recall when we were talking about microstrip antenna, I did mention that h should be less than 0 0.06 lambda and at car band lambda is very small. So, 0 0.06 of lambda will be also very small. So, now at this particular frequency and for the substrate, we calculated the length of the patch, width of the patch using the standard equations which we saw when we were talking about rectangular microstrip antenna. The connecting length has been taken approximately equal to lambda by 2. We chose connecting line width 0.4. In fact, we did study the effect of the width also. So, we varied the width from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 and then we felt 0.4 is a good option and the space between the patches which is center to center spacing is about 5.45. So, let us see what results we got over here. So, this is the S11 plot. You can see that this is the bandwidth over here. If you look at the number, this is almost 2 gigahertz bandwidth. That is a very large bandwidth, but if you really look at a percentage, it is only about 5.6 percent here, but that much bandwidth is available to us. So, that is the impedance plot. You can see that this is the plot, which is the radiation pattern plot at 36 gigahertz. You can actually see that the side lobe levels are relatively low. But there is a one small problem, you can actually see that the gain is fairly decent which is about 19 dB, but you can see that the gain bandwidth is relatively small. Okay? So, you can see that the gain is decreasing. So, why this is happening and why this is uh, giving us a good thing? So, let us just go back, look at the configuration one more time. So, let us say when we feed over here, so what happens from here? the let us say power travels this side also and this side also. So, from here let us say then this patch. So, this will also radiate little bit, part of that power will go there. Then this will radiate little bit, part of that will go here. Then this will radiate part of that. So, basically what happens if you think about this as a maximum power. So, if I put over here maximum and then as we move along the power will keep on reducing. Same thing happens over here, power will keep on reducing. So, this actually gives us a natural, you can say taper distribution. So, since it is a amplitude is non-uniform, changing it like this here, it gives us the lower side lobe level. Now, there is another reason why we choose at the center, why not we feed at the end over here. There is a reason. If you feed at the center, then what happens? All these patches, even if you design perfectly lambda by 2, lambda by 2, but that perfect will happen only at single frequency. So, we can say that okay, at single frequency, all of them are in the same phase. But if frequency changes, what happens now? Let us say this will see a delay of say suppose say minus 5 degree, this will also see another minus 5, another 5. So, what will happen? Because of that beam will try to tilt in this direction. Now, this side will also try see the similar phase delay, then the beam will try to shift in this side. So, one side is trying to shift on this side, another is trying to shift on the this side. So, with the resultant that the beam be remains maximum in the broadside direction, but that happens only over a smaller 
bandwidth. So, as the bandwidth increases, phase error increases and then you one actually sees a split in the main radiation pattern. So, we will continue from here in the next lecture. So, in the next lecture, we will see uh, how series feed behaves if you feed at the end or you feed in the center. Then we will see how corporate feed can be used, how corporate feed needs to be designed for different configuration. Then we will also look at smaller corporate feed and a larger corporate feed also. And then we will look at the combination of series and corporate feed. So, with that, thank you very much. We will see you next time with more arrays and feed networks. Bye.